Thread Inventory Tracker by Lord Liberdan. This is a video showing you how to use the program. After opening it in Excel or Numbers, depending on the program that you're using, or possibly even the device that you're using, you'll be shown this screen. It may look slightly different depending on which device you're using. If you're using mobile, for example, you're unlikely to see the Name and Conventions box, and instead, you're likely to see just this window here. If you wish, you can read this particular window. However, the highlights are that any time that you see a yellow cell, you can edit any of those calculators in that cell. Any time that you see an asteroid, sorry, an asterisk, this means that you can specifically allocate that these are hard to find or possibly even discontinued in some countries' threads. Then there are a quick access set of buttons, depending on what particular thing that you're looking for. For example, there are some color charts for the main color chart, and the skin and hair color charts. There are tools estimated at the back, and there are some quick access buttons. Depending on which programs that you're specifically using, the tabs at the bottom may also be highlighted in the specific colors as well. You can either click one of these buttons, or if you wish, you can simply click one of the tabs to go directly there. It's entirely up to you how you choose to wish use the program. However, if you wish to use it in either way, neither will stop you using it the other way. Therefore, you can use it one way sometime and one way a different time. We'll start by looking at the number field. This is essentially where most of the tracking takes place. As you can see, we've already pre-populated some of the owned threads with just some random data. You would have to type these in depending on the specific threads that you own. If we look at the top here, there's a yellow box under search. Let's say we're looking for number eight as a thread. We can simply hit number eight and hit enter, and it will find that specific thread on the table, and it will tell us exactly how many we own. This is exactly the same for the color tab. However, the difference between the two is that the number tab literally lists every single thread by the number that you're physically seeing, from one all the way up to 6,873. DMC threads are non-uniform, therefore there are many threads that are not covered here. For example, you may have 1000 that's completely missing despite the fact that the numbers go far beyond it. The DMC threads by color is simply based upon the color order. This is something that DMC have made themselves and as a result we have not um, connected in any single way. You can find the specific column chart by looking at the main color chart tab. I've made this slightly smaller in order for you to be able to see it slightly better on this video. However, all of these numbers are listed out one, two, three, etc. in all the different columns in the color charts. It may be hard to find the number that you're specifically looking for in these columns, therefore we've added a column lookup chart. This lists out every single number and it tells you exactly what column you can find it on in the specific field. So for example, let's say that we're looking for three, two, one. We can see that here on the number, it's red and it's in column one. If we go back, this is column one, we look for 3, 2, 1 red, and then we can find it. This does not, however, include discontinued threads, threads not covered by the international color cut, colorous threads, atoll threads, satin threads, or fluorescent threads. The reason for this is that DMC do not consider these mainline threads, and as a result, they are not covered. However, the by number are covering these. As you can see at the end, you have colorous, satin, and a series of discontinued threads as well. These just allow you to better work out exactly where they are. However, it should be noted that some of these discontinued threads may not be perfect color correlations. You can also go into this tab for discontinued and hard to find threads. This specifies exactly the grouping in which they're specifically made discontinued. It gives you some additional information, tells you when they were discontinued and what the likely reasons were for them. The vast majority of these are simply a case of they probably didn't sell very well. However, there are some US specific threads that have changed based upon EU dye laws. It's completely up to you if you intend to use these threads or not. Going on to the color charts, as we've already mentioned, this is the official DMC color chart that you can use with real thread samples. It may give you a better representation of the threads that you're trying to use rather than the color fields that we've put down here. It's simply incredibly hard to correlate these threads with exactly a color that you can see on the screen. There's also a skin and hair color chart. In order to use these, 
you're specifically looking for a color of skin or hair that you're looking for, you find it on the skin tone line, which is the first, or the main body line, which is the first column on this. And then you can replace the threads specifically in your design or pattern, or create them as well. So for example, let's say we're looking at 951 for a fair skin tone, a highlight will be 3770, and then a shadow will be 3856. You can, if you wish, try to do this with hair as well, and we've given you lots of different options. However, what I would say with hair is it's better to have four tones rather than three. You have the main body, you have a highlight, a shadow, and then I would probably take the main body from highlight section as well. This just gives a slight highlight edge that you're more often than likely to find in hair, simply because hair is more reflective than skin would be. There are then a series of tools at the end of the program as well. This one, for example, is a specific sheet on availability checker. So for example, let's say we're looking for thread 666, and we know that we need two of them. It's already telling us that the skins in the collection have one, so we need to buy more and the amount we need to buy are one. We can do this for pretty much any thread that we have in the system, but as you can see here, if I need number thread number one, I already have one sc uh, two skins in my collection, I only need one, therefore I do not need to buy any more. This can just be an easy way in order to work out exactly how many threads that you need. You can copy and paste anything into these columns so you don't have to specifically type them out, however please do not change any of the white columns as there are lots of formulas in here. In addition, you also have a dimensions calculator. This allows you to work out exactly how much fabric that you're going to need. It also tells you things like needle size and strands for stitching. So for example, let's say we're doing a really big project that's 1000 stitches by 800 stitches. Let's say that we want to use 14 count. It will tell us exactly how big the pattern is in centimetres and inches. It will tell us exactly the size of fabric that we need in centimetres and inches. The difference between the two is that the fabric calculation has an additional extra few inches around all of the um, sides in order to make sure that you don't hit the edges. In addition, it will tell you the needle size that we suggest, the amount of threads for stitching, and the amount of strands for back stitching too. You can change this at any time to have very specific calculations, and it will calculate absolutely everything for you. It goes all the way up to 24 count, however, if you want to use anything higher than 24 count, we suggest you use the 24 count information still. The reason for this is that the fabric is likely to pull apart slightly more than it would in standard AA that it's in lower counts, therefore you probably still need the extra amount of fabric and the needle sizes, <coughs> the needle sizes don't go any smaller. In addition, there's also a floss, a floss use estimator. So for example, let's say that we are using 14 count fabric and we have decided to go with the two strands. Let's say I'm looking for 666 and I'm going to be doing 654 stitches. It's telling me that I'm going to use 0.4 skines, meaning that I'm going to need one skine of that particular thread. Let's say instead of 6540, it's 65400. I'm going to need 37.4 skines, therefore the amount that I will need is 38. So for example, if you know that you need 38 skines, you can then go back to your activity checker. You can type in 38. I've only got one, therefore I need to buy 37. In addition to this, there's one final tool in the program, and that's a thread conversion chart. This changes DMC to Anchor, Cosmo, JMP Coats, Sullivan's, Presenter or Finica as it's sometimes known, Badira, Appleton's and Krynik. You may see that there's lots of these dashes. The reason for this is there's simply a considerably larger range in DMC than there are in any of the competitors, therefore it's unlikely that you're going to be able to fill all of these spots. For anything that simply does not match or is too close to a different colour, we've simply ignored. So you may sometimes have to sub in a DMC or sub in an alternative thread in order to make sure that the colours that you're looking for are perfect. Once again, you can go back to things like the skin, hair and colour charts to make sure that all of these are specific for the thing that you're looking for. Let's say that you found a particular skin colour tone that you really like, you can then say, hey, I want that in um, Anchor, and then you can go to Thread, you can simply look up exactly where they are, let's say it's 160, and then you can work out that that's actually Anchor 175.
These are all in number order, and so you can simply scroll down to find the specific thread that you're looking for. However, as with all tables, you can specifically look for a singular thread just to work out what that might be. Or if you wish, you can also make sure that absolutely everything is covered and it's, for example, ascending or descending to make sure that you have the different colors that you wish. You can do this on every single column as well. So let's say you want particularly anchor to be the first ones, you can do this in all of them. Once again, you can go back through these specific um, options at the bottom to click every single tab, or you can just go straight to the summary and then click through to the specific fields that you want. There's no button that goes directly back, however, hopefully this should tell you roughly how to use the program. If you do ever have any queries, please do reach out to me, I'm always happy to answer anything. And there is one final note on the naming conventions. Many people have realized that DMC company have not actually released names for embroidery threads. All of the names that you see here have come up with by us. They are generally accepted by many of the communities around, uh, cross-stitching and diamond art, and as a result, these are more likely than not the ones that people will be referring to. However, they now may not match perfectly. There is a particular color list that DMC has used in the past, and many people are specifically looking for this color list. We do have this, it's not part of the standard file, however, just ask us and we were quite happy to send it. As of 2023, DMC have updated their website and they've actually updated the names once again. We believe that this may be a permanent and official naming list, and as a result, we're working with DMC at the moment to make sure that we can get them working and make sure that the uh, names are exactly as they should be on the website too. We do not yet have an update on this, but as soon as we do have an update, we'll either offer this out for a standard product or we'll add a link here in order to make sure that you can get access to everything that you need. Once again, if you need any help, please do reach out and I'll be happy to help you.